Hello everyone! And dito na naman ako to give you another interesting topic that I want to help many students, um, many professionals who are probably doing your master's or doing your thesis or research. So I had one um, uh, comment from one of our or myself of our viewers or subscriber. Um, sh this person particularly was asking me to do a video about aqua farming or farming or anything about environmental research. So I'm focusing this topic about uh, let's say for example our topic today is about aqua farming. Okay. Ano ba yung aqua farming, either fish, uh, fish farms, uh, any type of farming, you can use the ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Okay. Now, if you're given a topic about aqua farming, fishing, any type of uh, um, aqua farming that the teacher asks you to do, if you're doing this type of research, you need to specify a specific, uh, um, let's say a specific type of fish, fish farming. Because pag broad yung topic mo na hindi mo specify, let's say, bangus or tilapia or, or, or shrimp or, or what else uh, ginagawa mga fishing ngayon, mga crab. So you have to be specific on what type of aqua fishing or farming you are you want to choose or mga hipon, okay? Para hindi ka masyadong mahihirapan when you start writing your research, especially the body and the research of your research literature for your specific topic. Now, um, for for aqua fishing, um, in my in my knowledge, when you choose this topic, you need to make sure either you go for organic farming or inorganic farming. Now, if you're going to do organic farming, make sure that you identify, you modify, and you define what is organic farming. Okay. Kasi yun ang gusto malalaman ng mga readers may. So, ano ba talaga yung organic farming? What, why are you choosing organic farming? I know ang mga problema ngayon ng organic farming. So if you're going to state that in the, the problem for your first or second paragraph. Now, nowadays, common yung non-organic farming. Why? Kasi mas mabilis, mas madami ang kita pag ginamit ang non-organic farming sa uh, based on research. Dahil... Um, uh, the fish grow faster and bigger and produce more as compared to the organic farming na medyo uh, limited yung income, limited yung production as compared to the non-organic farming that ginagamitan ng hormone, ginagamitan ng mga steroids, ginagamitan ng antibiotic. So these are the things that you need to include kung non-organic ang gagawin mo. What are the rest? Ano ba talaga ang, ang mga risk na maiisip natin kung iyon ang gagamitin mo um, step doon sa farming na sinasite mo? Now, it's gonna be complicated dahil maraming mga conflicts na yun sa debating either which is really best for our economy, non-organic ba or, or um, organic dahil Mahirap ang um, panahon ngayon when it comes to economy and the income. So, put yourself in the situation. Para maganda yung takbo ng uh, paper mo, ng writing mo. Let's say, pretend yourself you are a fish farming right now, fish farmer. Uh, you're raising tilapia. Okay. Now, in raising tilapia, um, you have to question yourself, gagamitin mo ba yung mga just mga manure na pagkain ng mga tilapia or bibili ka ng mga artificial uh, feeds para sa mga sa tilapia mo. Now, kung ikaw ay pro-organic, i-explain mo. Kung ikaw ay non-pro-organic, 
it explain more so you have to have these concepts you can para ma impress mo teacher mo ikung kaya mo isay yung dalawa organic and non organic go for it para mataas yung points mo pero kung masyadong complicated at hindi mo kaya itong i I defend lahat yung mga why why they use hormone ano ba yung ano ba yung causes ng hormone why they use ant antibiotic ano ba yung mga side effects ng antibiotic ano yung mga risk na magkukuha ng mga tao if they gonna eat your fish in your farm so put yourself in the situation and choose the best um, topic that you want to impress your teacher kasi isang topic na to eh, either there's only two ways you can go Either you're going to focus on one and make really good at it, or you're going to focus on two and do less good at it. Dahil hindi mo mapuprove lahat. So, make sure, um, ang payo ko sa'yo, if you're choosing this topic, either you're choosing farming, you're choosing fishing, you're choosing any type of algae culture topic, mas mataas siguro yung points ninyo kung i-relate nyo sa health. Okay? And how you gonna do that? Maraming mga nanay ngayon who are pregnant that they, uh, have developed uh, pregnancy complications, or they have they gave birth to babies who have birth defect because of the pesticides or yung mga chemicals na napukuha in the food from the food that we ate or they ate, and especially seafood okay so because of the level of mercury because of the levels of uh, uh, pesticides sa mga fish so you have to have this research ilan ba talaga yung mga makukuhang mga mercury doon sa mga fish okay ano ba talaga ang connection doon sa mga birth defect doon sa kinakain ng mga contaminated fish ng mga na nakakakain ng mga pesticides. So, bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng problema na gano'n? Aware ba ang mga tao on how to protect themselves to make sure when they're washing their 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 uh, vegetables in the farm or kung naglilindi sila ng mga isda, tinatanggal ba talaga nila yung mga guts para mabawasan yung mga pesticides? So, those are the things. So, what are your precautions? Ano yung mga precautions mo na para maiwasan yung mga insidente na yun. So, yun nga, sinasabi ko, I talk about, uh, we have to educate the public, the community, on how to prevent not to eat it, not to eat mga, mga innards ng mga bituka ng ganito, mga bituka ng ganito, because that's based on research. Doon kung makapit yung mga sakit, yung mga pesticides, doon sa mga bituka, ng laman ng loob ng mga mga animal farming or mga uh, seafood farming. So, those are the things that you can include in your uh, recommendation or in your promotion dahil doon ka makakuha ng mga gandang points. So, this, that's, that's the topic na... This is very interesting topic. When you do agriculture topic, when you, when you do some things about environmental topic, you can explore. You can explore. Hindi lang yun sa topic na yun. As long as, wag ka talagang... Ito ang mali ng mga writer, okay? Kung ang topic mo about fishing, you can explore either ideas, but you always have to connect the fishing. Fishing should always connect that. So, you're talking about uh, uh, complications in pregnancy due to seafood contamination of uh, mga pesticides. You're talking about birth defect, mga bata na may, mga, uh, uh, what's a clip, clip lip or clip palate, uh, mga bata na may mga differentia sa mga utak due to, again, food contamination of pesticides, blah, 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 blah. So, you're, you explore your ideas, but at the same time, kung makapit ka pa rin doon sa pinaka-main idea mo, doon ka kukuha ng points. Kung ako ang teacher mo, at ang topic mo is aqua farming or whatever topic, environmental topic you have, and you can relate it to some, some instances na problema sa health based on your topic, man, I'm just, I'm gonna give you a big, a high grade. That's the thing. If you're a teacher right now, and, and if you have a student who can explore these ideas, give them a credit. Because when you allow your
your students to explore more ideas related to the topic. Accept it as long as it's connected to the topic. Huwag niyong ignore yung, yung mga nasayad ng ideas na also good for the topic that you're assigned to the students. So, teachers, educators, you need to be also open-minded because I've noticed that in my, in my uh, profession, because I have four professions, so these four professions that I have, naiikumpayo ko talaga kung alin yung incompetent uh, way of how you grade, uh, how, how educators uh, do their marks sa mga term papers or writing papers. So make sure that you allow your student to explore some ideas give them insights instead of just focus on this, focus on this, focus on this, but not ex well explaining ano yung ipo focus on estudyante mo. When, when you do this, you'll have a better outcome for the success of your student as well as for your teaching profession. So I hope you learned something from this video on how to write a research about environmental, uh, health, uh, aqua farming, agriculture, uh, any type of environmental thing, this is a good way in how you can explore some ideas. So, again, thanks for watching. See me again on my next videos. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. I need your comments so that I can explore more and think more on what would be my next research video. So, thanks again for watching and have a really, really nice day. Bye for now.